What pisses you off while playing video games? Binary moral choice system. Option A donate to the poor. Option B eat babies. One I'm good. Please let me run all your errands for you while you sit idle. Two I'm evil. I'm going to stab you and then rape your children as you lie on the ground bleeding out. Three I'm neutral. Pay me some money and I'll do something. For I'm bored of this terrible writing and wish to exit this conversation. Getting stunned constantly. Ha ha. You got up and I stunned you instantly again. Isn't this fun? Welcome to a stun loop for the next 95 minutes straight. When you beat the boss, but then the cutscene has you lose. Bitch. I handed that guy's ass to him. Those bother me, because what's the point in winning the fight? Couldn't I just let the boss walk all over me with the same outcome? Why do I have to beat him just to watch myself lose? Why can't I just lose and get the cutscene? I liked how Halo Reach approached dying in a cutscene. You fight endless waves of enemies, until you eventually lose. It feels like a losing battle from the start and I much prefer that, if the reality is I lose no matter what. Yep. It sucks if the game makes you try again when you lose. Then the win condition is watching a cutscene where you lose. If the cutscene has me losing, then just let me lose and still progress. The inverse of this. Where an early boss is basically guaranteed to womp you, but you can beat it, if you're good enough is a lot of fun, so long as the time is taken to make some small change to the scene that follows. I know there's one in one of the Kingdom Hearts games where, if you manage to win you then pass out from exhaustion, right after which is cool. Cutscenes that cannot be paused, yeah. Nothing like I'll go pee when I clear out this room. Just one more thing to go, and done. Oh wait, shit a cutscene, and it's important to the story, and it's really long. Then when you try to pause, it instead skips the whole cutscene. When your character says something different than what you meant with the chosen dialogue option. L.A. Noir. Picked out in a completely calm interrogation so far. Stop playing. You piece of shit. Or I will shoot you right there. When my character can't do things I could do like climb over a 3 foot high wall. Could skip half of Dark Souls 2 if you could just climb a wall. Jaligan is personal friends with me I as a key. When you're at a part where, if you die you have to watch an entire cutscene again no skips. Similarly, I hate it when you die during a boss fight, but the checkpoint isn't right before the boss fight. So you have to go through the whole area again, and either fight all the enemies all over, or try to run past them without taking damage. I don't mind having to fight a boss 10 times before I can finally beat it. But having to go through a bunch of bullshit just to try again seriously kills my motivation to keep trying. The posture I always find myself in. What do you mean? Chairs were made to be laid down on. And you can't prove me otherwise. Escort quests. The target is always trying to get themselves killed. Or when you walk with the NPC, but your normal speed is faster than them, and you constantly have to keep stopping to keep with their pace. Witcher 3 nailed that mechanic. They'd match your speed every time. Even if they were leading you somewhere. If you walked, they walked. If you ran, they ran. Not always. In some follow me, while I narrate they just go their own walk speed. 3D games, where you can't tell where you will land after a jump. And then you land it, but you reflexively jump again a little bit, because you hit right at the edge and you fall off. When I increase the difficulty but it only makes my character weaker. The Skyrim difficulty is really annoying to me. The fact that on Legendary you do like 20% normal damage and the AI do 200% is just irritating. If I want a higher difficulty it's not, because I want to make a 20 minute dungeon take 2 hours and either be a stealth archer or glitch my enchanting to actually make the game take a reasonable amount of time. That didn't hit me that's bullshit. Everyone in the house suddenly needing me for one reason or another. Yeah rice swear to god. It's as if they can smell that I booted up my system to play a game. When the main character does something in a cutscene that they can't do during gamma play, or the reverse. When the plot relies on them being unable to do endure something that is no problem during gamma play. Mass Effect 3. Ducking Kaleng radiating a cutscene more in field that Shepard can't withstand. 
when my late game god mode character who can kill anyone and everyone in the game randomly gets snuck up on and dropped by one punch in a cutscene, putting me in the villain's clutches. Even better when you just shredded the villain in the boss fight, but then you lose because the script says so. One of the things I really liked about Dragon Age Origins is that there's a boss fight that's really difficult, and if you lose you then have an escape from the dungeon mission. However, if you manage to defeat the boss, there's no stupid cutscene where you get defeated. You just stroll out the building without getting captured or thrown in the dungeon. Crazy leaps in difficulty. My options for Civ 6 are currently beat the game with little to not difficulty, or move to the next level, where I'm in last place for every category the entire game, while barely fending off barbarians who have units twice as advanced as me. To piggyback on your comment, it's always bugged me that in Civ and many other games like it, a difficulty increase doesn't mean the AI plays better, but instead means they get production bonuses I will get penalties. They will still run their units into a meat grinder or fail to defeat a simple basic strategy or trick. The game doesn't really get more difficult. It just means you need to find out how the AI falters. It also means you don't get to improve your tactics against a similarly strong opponent. You just need to get really efficient at massacring their shitty units. The best way I found to beat higher level opponents was to create a World War 1 style killing field where I draw all the opponent's units into. Shoot them with ranged units from multiple angles, and then quickly run in, and defeat a city, when they are low. This would usually be a crap tactic against humans, who are good at the game. But it works okay against higher level AI. 90% chance to hit. Miss. 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 If it ain't 100% accurate, it's 50% accurate. Lag. I've played so much lagging video games, when I was a kid that I think it impaired my reflexes in real life. Lag truly sucks. Plot critical NPCs behind multiple loading screens. Quick travel to the wizard's tower load. The tower load. Climb the stairs to the second floor load. Go through into the portal to the wizard's inner sanctum load. Talk to the wizard. It's less common than it used to be, but still gets me every time. When an NPC you need to follow is faster than your walking speed but slower than your running speed. Just make the NPC have an adjustable speed to what the player is doing. If they have important information they need to tell the player add a small cutscene at the end giving the player the download. Any mandatory requirement for an internet connection in a game where you never do anything that would require connecting to the internet. You must create an account. Duck you. You must access the game server to play. Duck you. You must download and install patches for 3 days before you're allowed to actually start playing. Duck you. You don't actually want to talk to or interact with other players or find out other people's scores or see how well other people are doing or get holiday themed DLC or be nagged to buy stupid skins and pay to win credits. But you must have an internet connection anyway. No and duck you very much. When it's a team game and the team doesn't work together. What's the point then? Bots. I know botting will always be a thing, but in MMOs it's an issue with me. I'm not worried about PvE or PvP bots as I feel those are easy to crack down on and general aren't as good as an actual player. I'm complaining about economic bots. Bots that farm roots for hours on end. Bots that spam dungeons for soloable items example herb nodes in classic WoW. Bots that play the auction houses. These bots can oftentimes be harder to detect and can destroy markets on servers by flooding them with items sold at minimal markup because they farmed so many of them. How shit I am. The other people playing. One I've just finished the room, so I'd have to say hints that describe what you're already doing instead of how to progress from where you are. Not played the sequels, yet so I don't know if they fix this. Two good features of games that are left out of the sequel. Elder Scrolls. I'm talking to you. Quests missions that keep you in tracking for some inexplicable reason. I shouldn't need to repeatedly google how to progress through the game. You could spend months arguing with more Owind fans. When stuff is cut out of the game to be sold back as macro transactions. I can tell what should been part of the base game you jerks. Fetch quests to progress the main story too much backtracking. 
People walking in front of the screen and cutscenes that can't be skipped. When games waste my time. So many games are padded with unnecessary bullshit and it's like I only have so much free time in my life. It's probably the one reason I'll drop a game or not finish it. Late to the party. But I can't stand narrative dissonance. Because the devs can't sacrifice gamma play for the story. It was painful during the later part of Insomniac's Spider-Man. Where Spidey complains about having broken ribs and being utterly exhausted in a cutscene and immediately goes into gamma play the same as before, while he traverses the city at full health and no changes to any of his animations. It's hard to buy into how beaten he is and the sacrifices he's making to save the city when nothing about the gamma play fundamentally changes. Scripted failures and successes. Like, if I cream the boss in gamma play, I don't want a cutscene with the boss actually winning and just going easy on me. Similarly, if I die, I don't want a cutscene where I actually win by some intervention or whatever. Don't pull that BS on me. I want to win through my own power or fail due to a lack thereof. When the room Jesus ducks me in the butthole, RNG mechanics are often unavoidable. So it makes no sense to get mad over them. But a bad roll at a critical moment can bring me close to an aneurysm. A wall of text. And at the end they ask if you understand. And if you select no you get to read it all over again. People that yell at you for messing up when I'm just trying chill after work. This is why I turn off voice chat in games. Even though some of my best experiences were with a solid squad working together. Mandatory updates that take up several gigabytes of storage and do nothing to improve the game itself. Infinite enemies. I noticed this first in an older Call of Duty game where at a certain point you shoot a bunch of enemies trying to clear the area, but more just spawn. You had to progress through the area to make it stop. Then it went back to normal. There's a level in Back 4 Blood that does this too. Every section of the game I've played you can kill all the zombies in an area, so you can explore a little bit knowing the director will throw more at you if you delay too long, but the level where you blow up the boat just throws horde after horde at you until you get to the lower levels. It's just weird. Like where are all these enemies actually coming from? Bad UI design. Whenever it's on either extreme S lens. UIs that are tiny, clustered and hard to read, or UIs that are gigantic and cover half the screen. As if the UI was designed for 1440p, but the rest of the game was created for 640p. Also, unnecessary extra button push for small repetitive things. Like hitting more buttons doesn't mean the game's more active, if those button pushes have no meaning or reason to exist. RDR2 on PC had a lot of this shit. Like why R interact with objects either E, R, F, Shifty and whatever else. Just pick one. Okay I'm gonna throw it out there when people shit on someone who is low level starting out in the game. Escort missions. Especially when the AI is so stupid that it ends up making me fail the mission and start over again. We could either go around this camp full of enemies or wait until they are cleared out. Nope. Let's go straight down the ducking center, and if we get hit, slow down so that they can shoot us more. When a sports game refuses to make any significant changes to its game, but asks for more money. People telling me how to play when I'm just trying to relax. Related if I'm playing a puzzle game and someone else keeps trying to tell me how to solve the puzzles. Especially after I've asked them to stop. Not being able to save whenever I want. Like, I have other things going on in my life. If I can only fit in 10 minutes of play right now I want them to be worth it this is the entire reason why my play has slacked off so much because the play has become a chore in a lot of games. Film grain effect in horror games. Your shit won't be more scary because it looks like as if I'm playing on an old court monitor 